centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great western ocean to discover new lands. They were never heard from again. Until now. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper, DJ Knight as Ikemba, the Musalian Bio Priest, Michael Sinclair II as Eli, the Misajai Lightbringer, Christina Ariel as Sila 919, the Monsagene Bio Priest, and Eugenio Vargas as the Storyteller, as they travel the stars, defend their homes, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. Welcome to the Motherlands. Good Good evening, everybody. Welcome. I am a disembodied voice, and also my name's Eugenio, and I am your storyteller this evening. This is all totally planned. Don't worry, there are no technical difficulties whatsoever. I just felt it would be more mysterious this week if you couldn't see me. I'm absolutely kidding. I'll be with you all shortly. Uh, in the meantime, welcome. We're so happy to have you all here this week uh, for session eight of Into the Motherlands. Very excited to be here. Uh, while we work on getting me up in front of y'all, why don't we go around and say hello to all of our lovely players this evening. Let's start tonight with DJ. Mix it up a bit. Oh, hi. Wasn't ready for that one, but my name yeah. is DJ Knight. I am a uh, space and sci-fi streamer here on Twitch. I play Ikemba, a Musalian bio priest who just so happens to love all things cheese. And as you saw last week, lightly had some cheese sweats. Appreciate you for being here. <laughs> and thanks for sticking around. She sweats. I love it. Oh, look, there I am. Hi, everybody. Uh, fantastic. Let's uh, let's go over to Michael next. Uh, <clears throat> hello, folks. My name is Michael Sinclair II. Uh, you can find me Michael Crits everywhere. I play, uh, and my pronouns are he, him. I play Eli. Um, their pronouns are they, them. And they are a Misajai Lightbringer. Uh, totally excited for today's session. Huzzah! Uh, let's see, let's hop up to the top row. Hi, Tanya. Hey, Yania. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Ah, bien, bien. Ready to be here for tonight. How about you? ¿Cómo estás? Eh, así, así. Eh, eso es. Um, <laughs> es 20, 20. That's how everybody is. <laughs> eh, como si, como si. Uh, hi, I'm Tanya, Cypher of Tear. Uh, welcome. I play Invicta, your high and all blade keeper. Both Invicta's pronouns and mine are she, her. And uh, let's see what happens as we try to do some space plumbing this weekend. <laughs> I don't know how I've gone this long without considering it space plumbing, because that's exactly what it is. Last but most certainly not least this evening, Miss Christina, hello. You are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm Christina Ariel. That's my name below me. I play Sila 919. My pronouns and Sila's are she, her, and Sila is a Monsagene bio priest. She's a baller. She's working on her emotions and we'll just kind of see how that progresses and all that fun stuff. And also the greatest mystery of the day. Am I only cosplaying at the top? Am I wearing pajamas? Find out at 11. Oh, the mystery of the year. I love it. Once again, my name is Eugenio. You might know me as DM Jazzy Hands. I use he, him pronouns, and I am very excited to be here as your storyteller this evening. Uh, as usual, we are not done with our introductions, however, until we say thank you so very much to a few groups that have made it possible for us to be here with you this evening. First up, we want to thank Die Hard Dice so very much for their support uh, here in the Motherlands. Uh, most of you all who have been with us for several weeks probably already know and maybe have even gotten your sets but if you're just joining us this week we should tell you that the diehard dice the folks at diehard dice have a beautiful set of dice uh, called musalian skies that are available for purchase on their website dieharddice.com these beautiful blue and gold dice you can also get them with the numbers uninked uh, available for you to purchase as some memorabilia of our show how delightful thanks to everybody at diehard dice uh, next up we want to thank blue microphones for providing us with upgrades to our sound equipment so that you you all can hear us crystal clear. Thank you so much to the folks at Blue Microphones. They do USB mics, they do XLR mics, they do all kinds of different price points. These good folks, so go check out their stuff at bluemic.com. 
Third up, we want to say an enormous thank you to the folks over at Cortex by Fandom. Uh, our game system is primed by Cortex. We are very excited to get to use it. Uh, they have released their, aha, a couple of us showing them off. They have released their core rule books that are also available for purchase. Uh, beautiful, beautiful cover art. Uh, and when you buy it, I'm pretty sure this is true for all of them. There is a code in, well, I shouldn't probably show you mine, but there's a code inside for the digital version as well. So you get a fun little two for one there. Uh, check out their system and we want to say a huge thank you to them uh, for helping us put the motherlands together. Last but absolutely not least, a gigantic thank you to Twitch for being such a major supporter of Into the Motherlands. Uh, very happy that they signed on and believe in this project and helped us be here. Uh, and so we want to say thank you. I don't have to tell you how to find them because you already did. Anyway, uh, thanks so much to all of them. I believe thus ends our thank yous for this evening, which of course means we move to everyone's favorite segment, who wants to do the recap? <laughs> Somebody's just ready to go. I'll do it. Like, I don't care. Am I going to do it? I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, DJ. All right, go for it. Hi, I'm DJ Knight, aka Akemba. Last week, Akemba joined the crew after being she sweated out of the previous uh, <laughs> adventure. He joined the crew on the side of the other ship. He rode, he knocked out, he was like, oh, snaps. Looks interesting in here. I heard there was beheading. There were some beheadings. There were some stabbings through the floor, sticking people to it. And uh, some other things happened. But right after all of that craziness, they got back to the ship. And then they decided to go straight on to their destination. They were all wild by the green in the trees. But while they were exploring the green in the trees... Bertrand was like, uh, as you can see, it's lacking water. So we brought the water. We landed with the water. We saw the elephant head inside of the area that, you know, is lakes. And the lakes, we saw the water lines. The water lines were low. Then we found out that the water, the reason why we had our mission was because somebody had blocked the asteroids that attacked the moon that was delivering the ice that they brought down through space pipes to the planet and the lakes. Over the course of three days, it went from lots of ice to no ice. The camera was like, I don't believe this is a good thing. So they were like, aye, cool, we'll figure it out. And they set off to the moon to figure out why the ice was no longer coming. And that is missing a bunch of key stuff, but I feel like that covers it. Thanks. I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't hear a word after you did the Bertrand voice, but I'm sure it was all correct. Uh <laughs> Sorry. No. Oh my God. Don't apologize. It was everything. I love it. Uh, anybody else got, got anything to add to that lovely, what I'm sure was a lovely recap? <laughs> it's like doing the Bertrand voice. Give me an opportunity it to was just. I'm, oh, I'm going to sign you some NPCs. Some... That's it. I'm going to sign you some hot and NPCs as soon as I can. Uh, oh anybody God. else got anything they want to add to that lovely recap? Um... Sila and Invicta leveled up in emotions. They hung out and did their nails, did. and and actually, I did my nails IRL. I don't, ha I didn't have green, so yes, I love that. Yeah, so we'll just say that Sila came through, helped me with my claws. We're good. Yes, yeah, that was a moment that I refused to allow you all not play out. Uh <laughs> Anything else that we I also had an about? all we had an all crew get together. Yeah. Everybody had to come a little hangout in Silas quarters, and they got their new plateware and cutlery. That's, I had forgotten about that. That's right. You all can <laughs> eat on normal size plates now. <laughs> uh. and Bertrand was a little a little mildly offended, but. <laughs> He understood and moved on. And now we also met Bertrand's uncle, dude. That guy was wild. And Silo was like, nyeh, 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 and being a little bit of a jerk because, you know, the thing. And yeah, it's just going to be really exciting to see where we go because they were like, oh, we're going to go to the moon. And Silo was like, yes. But then Silo turned to the crew and was like, well, and didn't say yes for the whole crew before speaking with them first after the fact. It's true. And the yep. Grand Minister of Agriculture was deeply confused by that. Yep. Go, go ahead, I lie. Said it's sexy. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so 
we also got to learn a little bit of Hathorian culture about as far as they refer mm -hmm. to themselves uh, by their titles. They 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 would rather that than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, and then people leveled up in friendship, like I said before. Uh, I lie slightly leveling up in petty. Uh, you know. <laughs> That's where they're at. <laughs> so uh, I think that's it. I think everyone actually covered most of it. So that's yeah. That's awesome. This is a good recap. Yeah. The only thing I'll add, uh, just because it probably will come up, uh, is the the um, the way the system of address on Hathoray. Uh They use positions, and and even folks who sort of know each other and are friendly with each other, unless they are family or really close, even then they sort of use uh, generic like relate family familial relationship names. So if someone's older than you, they might be uncle or aunt. Uh, if they're younger than you or about your age, they might be you know sibling or brother or sister or. Um, so yeah, actual given names are rarely spoken on Hathoray. Uh, which was fun when you all said Bertrand's given name in the first four and a half seconds on the planet. <laughs> all right. So yeah, as uh, as we pointed out, as Silo pointed out, uh, Silo 919, Captain Silo 919 pointed out, whoof, you all, we left it with you all uh, jointly deciding that uh, you did in fact want to head up to the moon to check out and see. It does seem like the issue with the water supply is from the source, not from the uh, from the planet side end. Uh, so you all wanna head up there to the moon to figure out hopefully what's going on. And uh, the station master of, of this irrigation station uh, has said that they will, they will head off and get the pods ready for you all, uh, whatever that means. Uh, and so you all have uh, a little while, the Grand Minister of Agriculture uh, has other duties to attend to, but has said that she would like uh, an update, uh, you know, as soon as you all return, she will clear her schedule so that she can meet with you all as soon as you return. Um, and so it's just the four of you and Bertrand uh, at the moment uh, to prepare for the trip to the moon while the station master readies the transport pods. Uh, now we know, uh, as I recall, I, I sort of glimpsed the end of last week's episode so I could remember. I know that uh, Invicta is gonna go grab her blades so that she can wet them in the blood of her enemies, I believe is the way that she put it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sounds right. Uh, what other preparations, if any, uh, are you all are you all making? Uh, you can go back to the wistful wish and grab stuff if you need, or what, whatever it is that you want to do. But you've got a little time. <laughs> for question. what? Uh, for what it's worth, uh, Bertrand uh, will say to you all. You know, I I, uh, I don't know what you will. Uh, find on on the moon once you arrive there uh, but I if indeed you f you need to uh, leave the enclosure of the irrigation station there you m may want to take your individual space suits with you there are uh, company ones as it were moonside but I don't think they'll fit. Um, so about how long, how far away are my quarters? Would I get back in time to hear Parks and say that? Uh, oh, I think so, yeah. I'm just like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm in my suit, got my, <laughs> got my blades, I'm ready to go. Yes, <laughs> Invicta comes out and is just like armed to the teeth, sealed up, helmet on, ready. I love it, the preparation. Uh, Sila, did you have something you wanted to mention? Uh, Sila is preparing by tucking a few things inside of her face jacket, which is her brown oh, right. leather jacket. <laughs> and so she's thinking and she goes, and she makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and tucks them inside. She doesn't need them, but she wants to make sure that she brings a snack for the oh crew. God. So she cuts up like in four squares, like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and tucks them inside like discreetly. Silent 919 has gone from zero to mama bear so fast and it warms my heart. Um. I love it. Is we only have grab. a few episodes. We need some growth. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So Eli's gonna grab their spacesuit out of the uh, ship. Um, the uh, forget the the list will wish, um, and start to uh, get it ready so that. Uh, well, you know, essentially like make check all the check all the attachment points, check all the um, make sure it's all sealed. Like there's no like mm. puncture marks or holes every time that they, they just make this check every time just to be sure before they mm -hmm. put it on because we're not leaving yet. So there's going over that uh, they're picking up their rucksack as well and their spear that they have. Ooh, a spear. Yes. Yeah. Do we know about the spear? Have we talked about the spear? We have briefly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Ikemba, anything in particular? Muted myself just in case. Uh, Akimbo just like goes back and grabs his robes. He's got a robe that is made of a tougher material. Mm. Uh, so that way he can be comfortable, but also be prepared for a fight if need be. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. Uh, he, he replaces the wraps on his hand, on his hands that have the same kind of a uh, material. It's as close to vibranium as one can get in this universe, if I may. <laughs> you may, you may, because we're it's, still writing it. So yeah. it's legally distinct. legally distinct vibranium. Legally I, was, I was thinking of the same thing. So like. that means your wraps are made of the same material as my sword. Yeah, that's Perfect. right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and Terra. Right. And Terra. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wraps it on his hands. Uh, he's got a little mm. bit on his knees, his knee wraps, and he's got some like covering most of his feet. Uh, as foot wraps as well, just so he can be cool. prepared to uh, defend friends if it comes to that. But he is definitely ready Excellent. for battle because he, seeing how peaceful that Hathare is, uh, if somebody would attack their water in his mind. It's like it's a, it's got to be somebody who is out to do harm to them. Mm. And seeing as peaceful as they are. Like, considering in his mind, he's like, all right, I'll piece together that somebody's doing something wrong. If they're here, they mean business. So I should mean business as well. And uh, sure. he kind of checks himself with his uh, abilities just to see if he is still affected by the cheese sweats. So he's kind of ah! like checking his body to make sure he's still good to go. I love it. Uh, I should mention, because I don't think I did mention this to you all or on the air, uh, but any of you who had stresses uh, between all of the scenes that we've done uh, since your last, uh, since the last instance where you would have gotten stress, you can all step down any stresses that you have, any and all stresses that you have, uh, by as many as two steps. So anything, uh, if you've got a D6 in anything, that stress is gone. D4 is obviously also gone. If you got a D8, it's a D4. I don't know that any of you have lingering D10 stresses, but if you do, that's down to a D6 now. Um, I think my last one was a D6, so... So gone. The stress is gone. He has sweated out all of the cheese. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Yeah, that is a, a thing that we haven't had uh, so much happen so quickly on the voyage here to Hathare that we didn't really interact with that method of reducing stress, which is just you play scenes that aren't stressful <laughs> and you can step your stress down. Uh, and we Yay. have done that. All right. So after you all uh, sort of, you know, get your things ready, get your get your suits, get your weapons, get your bits, uh, and the station master, hydrologist first class, uh, comes up actually to meet you at the Wistful Wish uh, to inform you that the pods are prepared uh, and says that he will escort you to them uh, and get you ready for your trip to the moon, which should only take about an hour or so, which is very fast. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. So, uh, Station Master walks you walks you down, and uh, as as you all are going, he he just sort of there's a few things that he wants to go over with you, and you know, if there are any questions, you should let us know as well. Uh, first of all, you should be aware uh, that their water flow isn't uh, has not been reduced to zero from the moon's surface, which indicates that there are still uh, water-filled asteroids 
asteroids uh, pelting the surface of the moon. I mention this only so that you all are aware that if you need to leave the enclosure's uh, moon side for any reason, uh, check the scanners first to be sure that uh, an asteroid isn't coming right for you. What a terrible situation that would be, huh? Have you performed proper safety checks? Uh, it's all safety checks uh, on the pod and the station insofar as we are able to make here have been completed. Yes, Captain. Have you verified their safety harnesses? Uh, indeed, they are all in position and I made sure to adjust the levels of the cushioning gel in the pods to, uh, to uh, handle your... Uh, <clears throat> somewhat more diminutive size. Is there an emergency autopilot? Uh, well, the pod is, is on rails, so, uh, he, yes. And you, if any of you are watching, Bertrand is walking <laughs> with you. Bertrand does not plan on joining you all uh, at this point, but he's coming with you and he is living his best life watching Captain Silent 919 grill this station master. <laughs> Uh, so he says, uh, it's on uh, rails, so, so yeah, yes, autopilot is enabled. So what happens if it goes off the rails? Is there a safety mechanism? Is there something soft at the bottom to catch them should they fall? The station manager sort of freezes, looks to, Ber to, to Bertrand sort of helplessly like, what? Uh? And Bertrand just like notices something shiny off on the side and gives no help. Uh, <laughs> Pity's candy. Did Bertrand learn from Iwai how to be a little bit petty? I think maybe so. <laughs> okay. He was there maybe for that the moment time. and was like, oh, I'm going to try that. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the station master, like, seeing no help coming from any quarter, turns back to, to Captain Silent 919 and says, uh, I don't know. My crew are made up of very fleshy individuals. They are not in a safe outer rim. So I need you to make sure that they are taken care of. For one of them to fall, they cannot reboot themselves. They will just splatter. Do I make myself clear? Oh, goodness. Graphically and vividly. Yes, Captain. Uh, I will uh, uh, inquire uh, with some of our other engineers uh, what we might be able to put together as an additional uh, safety uh, system. Uh, and then sort of uh, like, t and uh, as an aside, which you all obviously hear because he's a large elephant man who really doesn't do quiet very well. Uh, he says, well, never had a problem before. And they show up and they're worried about things that aren't going to happen. Pardon us for taking proper precautions. Oh, oh. <clears throat> yes, of course. Uh, uh, at, at, at any rate, uh, um, yeah, uh, what else did I, uh, oh goodness, sorry. And he pulls out like a, a tablet and starts like flipping through a bunch of different pages, clearly somewhat thrown and trying to figure out what else he needed to tell you all. Uh, and he just sort of goes through some basics, you know, where the scanners are located. He tells you the layout is basically, you all will arrive at one of several, um, one of several intake stations uh, on the moon uh, where there is a large sort of enclosed space. There are sensor scanners and other sort of equipment there that you all can check out. Uh, there are intake stations all over the moon. So if you needed or wanted to go check out any others, uh, you can, he shows you uh, or tells you how to, how to program the pod to get it to move between stations on the moon. Um, you know, tells you how to get out of the airlocks should you need to walk the surface of the moon, although he isn't, I mean, he tells you because he doesn't know what you're going to find, but clearly he doesn't think you'll need to go out, but who's to say? Um, and then he pauses once again for questions, uh, obviously avoiding Captain Silent 919's eye. <laughs> so, if we do encounter an emergency and need to get back quickly, Mm. What is the best way to do that or to contact mm. you? 
return via the pod is already set and 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 I will show you uh, where the standard setting to return is. Uh, there is a somewhat um, obvious emergency return button that can also be used. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, except in the case of extreme emergency, where time is of the essence. Uh, it, it For the simple reason that your return journey will be very swift and likely very uncomfortable. Well, if there's an emergency, I don't think we'll be too worried about that. Uh, I suppose that makes sense, yes. Uh, uh, we right. have tested the emergency return button as well. Uh, uh, How recent quarterly. was it tested? Uh, we just had our first test of the quarter, oh, uh, just a couple of days ago. You didn't think to run a test before you used it on this day? Well, twice quarterly is the stat. Uh, we will uh, run diagnostics upon our arrival at the at the pod, Captain. Of course. Any other uh, questions? Uh -huh. oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and by this point, you all have arrived at the pod. And what you see is, uh, well, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it is a, a pretty large, obviously it will comfortably fit the four of you, uh, pod made out of that same excuse me, rose gold colored metal that all of the irrigation pipes are made out of, uh, which sort of explains why you, you didn't really notice it at first uh, or notice all of the tracks all of the rails that actually now that you have had them pointed out to you you see uh go up and down basically all of these irrigation pipes uh and now that you're looking a little closer and know what to look out for you can see that there are pods sort of all over the place that are all the time going up and down, not from the station to the moon, but from the station down to the surface. Uh, you see pods going back and forth. There are several on each pipe and they're just round, uh, more egg-shaped uh, pods uh, that, that sit on these tracks. And there are basically two that are connected to tracks that are attached to the main irrigation pipe that heads up to the moon. Uh, and this one is sitting door ajar. Uh, and inside you see these, uh, a big row of <laughs> enormous Hathore sized, what look like sort of a cross between, um, large like captain's chairs and like tanks. Uh, they are, they're definitely like very comfy looking chairs but they're all enclosed in these sort of glass uh, or, or crystal or something, transparent material cylinders uh, that have piping sort of coming out all over them. Uh, and the station master sort of gestures uh, as in, you know, well, well, welcome to your pod uh, uh, and, and sort of gestures for you all to, to go in uh, where he can explain to you the procedure. Uh, I'm just going to happily get into one of the pods. So just to get some clarification on the pods. Yeah. Um, the pods. It, it sounded like it's a singular pod with multiple uh, compartments or is it, are all our pods separated? No, you're all in the same pod that has, there are actually six different uh, Hatharayan sized uh, like seats inside this pod and probably inside each pod. Um, so you've got <laughs> more than enough room for all of you to be in this one. <laughs> got it. Yeah, they're, they're pretty large. Um, I mean, this whole operation is large, so it's all relative, but yeah. All right. Uh, I'm looking at this and thinking about our booster seats back on the Wistful Wish. Um, <laughs> so those are size for Hotharayans. Uh, are yep. we going to be safe? 
the station master nods and says, well, yes, uh, the, uh, the seats, uh, the seat capsules are designed uh, to inject, uh, 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 to inject the dampening gel uh, at, to fill the seat area regardless of the size of the body in it. So we have uh, loaded a board extra of the dampening gel uh, to accommodate uh, the larger volume that will be required to fill in uh, for your, uh, well, more diminutive sizes. Uh, I'm gonna, once I'm like in, I'm gonna hit the button for the gel, go, oh, that's, yes. that's, that's cold. Um, just mind yourselves. Yes. Uh, and, and hit the button like you go ahead, go ahead and push the button to activate. The dampening gel, yeah, because I just want yeah, to see absolutely. how it works. And absolutely. I figure it's cold. It's like ridiculously cold. Oh, yes. So basically what happens is you watch as I like just happy as a clam uh, sits in, straps in, and they hit this button. And this sort of bluish green goo uh, comes shooting into all of the pipes that are connected to this uh, to this cylinder that the chair is in. And you watch as basically the whole cylinder up to uh, up to Eli's like chin fills up with this stuff uh, and then continues to sort of fill around Eli's head. Uh, cushion you can feel it like cushioning the back of your head as well, Eli. It leaves your face uh, free to, you know, I don't breathe and talk. Um, but it otherwise fills the entire cylinder and it's, you can sort of move, like it's definitely, uh, it's, it's, it gives, you can sort of move around in it, but it's very slow and very strange feeling. Um, and this is not completely bizarre technology to all of you, although it's a bit sort of old fashioned, uh, but basically you all would probably recognize this uh, as, as gel that uh, fills in and basically cushions the forces that will be pushing against you as you are fired at some sort of very fast speed from the irrigation station uh, on the planet up to the moon. Um, it's not the most comfortable way to do it, which is probably why better technology has since been invented, but apparently Hathoray is a bit behind. Uh, and poor Invicta's just like shuddering, like I'm so glad I'm wearing a space suit because she's just thinking about trying to get all that out of her fur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not a problem any of the Hathorayans usually have. So not a, not a concern that they've uh, considered. She's seriously making scrunched up cat face as she gets into uh, a seat and just, she's not okay with this oh. at all. <laughs> does she, does she push the button right away or is she going to wait? Oh no, she waits. Yeah, she's okay. going to wait to the last possible second. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Kemba, Captain Silent 919, anything we should know about your entrance into your seats? Captain Style and I'm when I'm walks up and just says no. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, I don't, uh, what? <clears throat> no, I will not be covered in that gel. Uh, I, um, I certainly i would never dream of uh giving an order to a captain but uh i would strongly advise for your own comfort and and safety that you do you hear the sound of silent thinking by way of this beep 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 in the background <laughs> and she finally agrees and sits down begrudgingly. And just as she sits down, she finds one of the ports, plugs her hair in, and just powers down for a cat nap. <laughs> yeah, probably wise. At least that way you don't have to feel it. Ooh. Just uh, take a all quick right. charge. Just a quick charge. That's right. It'll be a quick trip. It can by anything. Kemba just sits down and is like, well different ways that I've traveled before. This is different, but meh, let's do it. And he just kind of lays back and just, it's comfortable. 
Yep, absolutely. Okay, uh, so the uh, station master says, oh, well, uh, there will be uh, communications relays. You can uh, communicate with us here at the station uh, at will, of course, uh, via the pod or any of the station's moonside. Uh, best of luck and, uh, well, honestly, I, I don't know whether to wish that you do find something or you don't. I'm still unsure what the best scenario would be, but at any rate, uh, best of luck. Uh, and he sort of bows to you all and, and steps out and walks away. And Bertrand, who has just very quietly been following along, uh, comes in and sees you all in your Hotharayan sized uh, seats and suppresses a giggle uh, again and uh, says, oh, but truly my friends, uh, be careful up there, yes? I, I, I look forward to our return journey and want to be sure that you're all there for it. So take care, my friends. Sila in her charging sequence is like triggered to respond, but doesn't respond properly because of the gel that's <laughs> on her. So all of a sudden in kind of a response to Bertrand's by, you just kind of see like a snap and she's like, dun, 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 and like elevator music, like girl from Ipanema starts just coming out. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that song traverses time and space. And is still the elevator music, even on Hathoray. I love it. Um, it's like 500 months. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Bertrand goes, oh, uh, the captain has provided traveling music. What a delight. Uh, be safe, my friends. Uh, and sort of exits the pod. Uh, and just as, as he's about to hit the sort of door close uh, button, whatever, the, the head off button, he's like, are you ready? Sure am. Ready as I'll ever be. I do love <laughs> watching <laughs> pot. <laughs> uh, sort of low key, just sort of like, you know, that sort of like you can see Bertrand's foot tapping. Like he's not full on dancing, but he's he's getting into it. Uh, but he says, oh, I do so love to watch the pods launch. Uh, off we go. And uh, he hits the button, the door closes, and there is a uh, mechanized Hothorayan voice uh, that counts you all down from 10. And when the countdown gets to zero, you are all very glad, well, all of you that are fully conscious, are very glad that you are in these gel seats because even with the gel, you can feel that you have just shot off from this station at a speed that I would guess, well, I don't want to make assumptions about y'all's past, but let's say you haven't often experienced, uh, if ever. It is very fast. There is a view screen so that you can see outside. Uh, whether or not you want to look is entirely up to you because it is just very, very high, very quick. Uh, and you can feel yourselves being sort of pressed into the seats and the goo sort of cush cushioning you uh, on all sides. And other than that, it's uh, it it's a pretty uneventful hour up there. Uh, you know, once you break the atmosphere, there's really not a ton of, of scenery, nothing really to see. Uh, by that point, you've been going so quickly for so long that your body has kind of adjusted to it. So it's really even hard to tell how quickly you're moving, if you're moving at all. You know, it's just sort of like the blackness of space out the viewfinder. It's a question. That, yeah. Do we keep that velocity for the whole trip? Um, Yes, <laughs> I mean it'll. You're not gonna. Uh, it'll slow down ever so slightly before you dock at the moon. But otherwise, for the whole hour, yeah, pretty much. I'm just picturing us all with like the equivalent of the bends when this thing stops. <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, there is certainly well, a perfect transition because when you arrive on the moon, uh, that same Hathoray and mechanized voice uh, instructs you all to wait patiently uh, for decompression and gel removal. 
And this process takes uh, what feels like an eternity because you do start to feel the gel recede from your chambers. Oh my God, it's so slow. <laughs> It's so slow. Uh, and you just are sort of stuck in there until it's done. Uh, but eventually, slowly, bit by bit, uh, the gel drains. You all get the use of uh, you know full range of motion back eventually. Um, and there's a very pleasant low chime uh, that sounds as your pods, uh, your seats rather, open up and the pod door uh, opens and you can see the Moonside Irrigation Station. Are there squeegees at all? Because I can just imagine my poor <laughs> space suit just... <laughs> there actually are kind of, because uh, Hathoreans, you know, with their sort of thick, uh, tough hide, that's kind of what they do to clean themselves off of the gel when they get out of these chairs is like squeegee themselves. So yeah, they're, I mean, they're big, a little oversized, but yes, there are. <laughs> so wait, let's just recap. So a, a seven foot tall hyena person in a space suit is taking an still oversized, even for them, squeegee and just cleaning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Perfect. I Perfect. will. Uh, I will do the same after waking up because I slept through the whole trip. Oh um, just I like love them so much. <laughs> just like you know, troops in transport. Like you're supposed to be awake for stuff, but you're not. You're just. You're out. You're out cold. <laughs> um, the gel was great. The little the yeah. little like you know, it was all comforting. I was like smashed up against whatever. It was fine. I was yeah. Honestly, that is a mood. I cannot be in a motor vehicle of any sort without falling asleep. <laughs> yep, that's, that's how that happened. I was uh, terrified to get my license when I turned 16. I was like, am I going to fall asleep at the wheel? <laughs> uh, but I will do the same as um, Invicta and, and use the prop size squeegee to clean myself. <laughs> Amazing. Kemba does kind of like does the same. He, he wasn't asleep, but he was meditating. Just ah, sure. Kind of just like keeping himself in the zone, like prepared for mm -hmm. whatever, but also just like taking in everything that's happening around him. So he's just feeling the vibrations through the gel and just kind of experiencing the ride while still kind of preparing himself for whatever happens, knowing that it might go sideways at any moment. So he's just like, mm -hmm. all right, he's getting himself in the zone mm -hmm. while meditating. I love it. And then he squeezes and, himself off because squeegee. Because <laughs> squeegee. All right. And then when our when our captain uh, powers back on. Captain Stella 919 powers back on, looks down, goes, ugh. And out comes one of her mechanized braids yep. with a little wind blower on it. <laughs> and it blows all of the gel like out of the crevices and has one that comes behind it with like a little blow dryer <laughs> i like to i like to live in that world i love oh that world God. what a great world to live in i love it uh yeah so our captain uh blow dries herself uh, and you all can can step out of the pod and into the station. And as soon as you do, there's another sort of chime uh, and a bit of static and a voice uh, comes over a PA system and says, ah, welcome to the moon. Uh, sorry, it's the station master, uh, hydrologist. I can see you and we were alone. Anyway, there are cameras and welcome to the moon. I thought I uh, would check in and make sure that your journey was satisfactory. I was wondering why the voice of the moon was Hothorayan. Uh, 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 but it's my voice. You see. Yes, I understand. Now, but at the moment, oh. not so much. Oh, of course, of course. I apologize for not introducing and identifying myself from the beginning. And as soon as he finishes saying that, you all are rocked. Uh, there is a, a quake of some sort, and you can hear distant from where you are, but you hear quite a boom. 
that's not normal, is it? Oh, uh, did you, uh, uh, was there a, a, a shaking sensation in Victor? Yes. Ah, totally normal. Likely an asteroid on the other side of the planet, of the moon, uh, hitting the surface. Uh, have have a look, if you would. Uh, and you can see that in this station, uh, it's basically a very large, again, uh, circular chamber, the walls of which are entirely, uh, well, they might be glass, they might be view screens, but you can see out uh, the through all of the walls and you look out and just see covering the surface of the moon are those rose gold pipes just everywhere. Uh, and you can see that there are other stations like yours, sort of cylinders, squat cylinders, uh, dotting the the moon landscape uh, and each of them sort of the roofs of them and you sort of assume that this is the the case on yours as well are sort of funnel shaped almost and have all of these pipes uh, all of the pipes in their vicinity sort of leading to that funnel and uh, the station master says uh, so you see uh, the surface is uh, entirely piped with lalsona uh, which of course is strong enough and sturdy enough uh, to uh, withstand just about any uh, strike you can imagine from uh, the, the asteroids of course they had to be for this system to to work how does the system work exactly? Oh, oh, Invicta, I'm so glad you asked. So, as the asteroids strike the moon, the debris from them uh, explodes out upon impact. Uh, now, all of these pipes have uh, suction devices uh, on the underside, closer to the surface, where they can collect the debris from the uh, collided asteroids. Uh, this debris is then uh, upon activation, this debris is siphoned to the nearest irrigation station, uh, taken in, sorted for minerals, uh, uh, water, of course, and, and other uh, metals and things, separated. The water is melted, uh, and uh, nope, the water is not melted. That would be silly. It would <laughs> freeze again. We're on the moon anyway. Uh, the water, the solid water, is then piped to the surface where it is melted and piped into the various uh, lakes. Now, I can see your uh, thinking and wondering, but Station Master, what if an asteroid so large that it would destroy even the Lalsona piping were to come to the moon? Well, uh... Let's see, uh, should be coming any second now. Uh -huh. Look up. And, and, and all... I look up. And you see uh, that there is a very lard, large, large, lard? There is a very large asteroid uh, heading for, uh, for the surface of the moon, not on top of you all, but like probably not far away enough to be totally comfortable with it. Uh, and the station master says, now this far too large, probably would at the very least cause some structural damage to the Lalsona pipes. So watch this. And you can hear uh, in the systems, the computer systems in this station, you can hear alerts start to go off. And as you watch this enormous asteroid uh, he start heading, getting closer and closer to the moon, you see coming up from the Lalsona piping, uh, these two, what for all the world look like laser cannons that would be mounted on like a, a, a battle spaceship, uh, come up orient themselves, there are three of them that come up, orient themselves on this asteroid and very efficiently slice through the asteroid, breaking it up into three uh, smaller pieces that then crash down to the surface uh, and cause no damage. Hmm, impressive. And all the while he's been talking, she has been with her, note, her data pad making notes. 
uh, which just further encourages him, of course, because he can see you all and is just loving that someone is interested. <laughs> what about the rest of you all? What are you thinking? What are you doing? What do we... Uh, he sort of at that point leaves you all to your devices, so. Uh, I'm going to be looking for the exit to, because like we're we're in the, are we in the irrigation station or just like the docking area for where the pods come into? Uh, so the pod actually has docked right up to an irrigation station. Oh, and you okay. can sort of see where there are docking stations on all the others that you can see as well. Gotcha. Um, I'm just going to start looking for the door to like the next area. Uh, feeling uncomfortable of just like standing in one place because there's asteroids everywhere. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> stand still. So It's a lot. It's a lot for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Any, anyone else have anything we should know about? All right. So, uh, oh, so go ahead, Sila. I'm sorry. Did you have something? I saw you move towards your mic, but I didn't want to. Um, Sila just takes everything in, just looking around, trying to see just how hard she'd have to hit if an asteroid came near her crew or herself. It's just on high alert. It's like, I'll describe it as like new mom anxiety when you're looking around and now you're worried about everything around you, like everything oh, no. that used to be kind of not that big a deal. Now you're just like, and you see just danger everywhere and you find yourself like, oh my gosh, like, no, like, look, if I don't do this and I don't move this piece, but wait, I know there's those lasers to cut those asteroids in half, but what if one asteroid gets over to the side and comes down just a little bit? Nope. So she's just making sure that all those bases are covered. Oh, Sila. Oh, and of course it's all the worst because it is none of this is imagined danger really there are in fact large space rocks crashing down onto the surface all around you so there you go and we are on the moon also on the moon uh, for what it's worth you can sort of uh, now that now that the station master has sort of shown you everything up here uh, you you do you can actually look back and get a, a pretty impressive view of Hothra from up here uh, it's, you know, you're sort of looking down, you can see the, you can see the pipe that leads back down to the irrigation station planet side, you can see the lakes spread out below you, they're very small, uh, but you can just make out the sort of elephant head pattern of the lakes and the beautiful greenery and it's quite the view, quite the view. Do we have artificial gravity or low gravity in this? Uh, in the station there is artificial gravity. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're 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 standard there, uh, okay. for sure. So Ila, you said that you wanted to head into the next chamber. There are basically two doors, one of which very obviously leads out out of the station altogether and onto the surface, uh, and then there's another one that sort of seems to lead into like the control, the real like computer control room of the station, uh, where the sensor devices are and and all of the sort of uh, all of that. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna press the button to open or hit the keypad, whatever I need to do yeah. to open yeah. up and at least look into the next room. Yeah, absolutely. So the next room is just wall to wall, sort of there are, there are three sort of obvious stations that have seats, uh, again, Hathoray and size seats, uh, but it's just covered in various uh, uh, monitors and and uh, readouts and, and um what do you call it, uh, stations to sort of check the sensor arrays, check the uh, check the function of this station and all of the piping in the vicinity of this station. Well, I'm not going to be of any use here. I'm not, um, <laughs> not most of this is things that are known to me. Um, and I just turn around, like, obviously I'm like right where the door is open. I just like turn around and just say that to the group. And then I step to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I lie, you underestimate yourself. If you didn't know how to use any equipment, we wouldn't have brought you. I suppose that's fair. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll assist. We also could have told you, I lie. If you have any questions, you oh. request assistance. Uh, I know that I'm not the only person that is. Uh, and space flight and different ship work before I can help where possible and kind of looks at uh, Invicta and is just like 
because they both have had space yeah jobs before so he's just like we got this and i like can fly like spaceship but they don't know like advanced sensors and engineering <laughs> like that's not their their cup of tea um but everything like basic like i would believe there's like a a, a generic you know technology knowledge that most people have and yeah. they also have the knowledge of flying ships but they don't have like fluid dynamics or how to read like certain sensors they're just like oh this is lots of things very lovely numbers and lights i don't know what to tell you <laughs> it's beautiful yeah. and meanwhile invicta's like my people yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, uh, so there are uh, Invicta and and Ikemba and and likely uh, Silent Nine One Nine as well. Uh, you all can, uh, you know, if you poke your heads into this other control room, you can for the most part pretty quickly see uh, what the what the various stations are for. You know, one of them is uh, <coughs> excuse me. One of them is primarily a sensor station for incoming asteroids. Uh, one of them sort of monitors the uh, the state of the piping on the surface, making sure that like there is no blockages and it sort of runs tests there. Uh, and then the third one actually looks like a mostly a comm station, probably a way to um, either hail other stations here on the moon or communicate back to back to the planet side uh, when the station master isn't being a big nerd and and forcing communication on you from the other room. <laughs> Captain Silent 919 is going to walk up to Eli and say, permission to place my hand on your shoulder. Sure, I'm glad you asked. And just make prolonged eye contact, say, Sometimes it's hard to do things and you she pauses to update her dad inspiring speech program. <laughs> there, there champ, it will be okay. You just have to give it your all. Not everything will be your wheelhouse, but some things you can learn over time. Have confidence and faith in yourself. Tap, 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 tap. Long stare, backs away. Thank you, I think I understand. Um, I, I love well that Sila is totally capable of normal speech, but when she does things like this, she sounds like a damn Teddy Ruxpin. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry to interrupt you, Eli. Please respond in it. It's new. I didn't know. I love it. I think it's perfect. <laughs> uh, no, I, I uh, like I said, I, I understand where where uh, Sila nine one nine is trying to say to me. So, um, it, it's useful advice. Uh, and then I will just turn to the group and say, um, well, uh. If I can help in any way or assist, that's something I'm very happy to do. Let's um, let's see what we can find out from this room. Yeah. I, for what it's worth, I think that's a great idea. Mm. <laughs> Just like we move I'm forward watched. as a team. <laughs> oh, we can't all go through the door at once, Sila. Please, after I... you. After you. I I walk through. I'm just like yeah. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I'm not the one who's supposed to do anything. But like at, at this point, <laughs> uh, while they're just talking and gesturing to each other, I just walk through the middle of them and then like oh. try and cease. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to look at. <laughs> some piece of equipment right. and i'm gonna i'm gonna see what i can see great i do sort of a little bit feel like uh Eli is just going to a station at random yeah yes absolutely for sure okay yeah. great go ahead and roll mm -hmm. me uh if you could just grab a d6 and roll that for me uh so we see which one you you hit to. got it <laughs> yep that's a one a one. All right. So uh, that 
Uh, that actually, for what it's worth, the uh, the tech at this station looks familiar, if maybe not exactly what you're hoping for. Uh, it seems that you have, by chance, wandered over to the comms station. Uh, so you see where the communications relay with the other stations are. You see that there appear to be dozens of other stations around the surface of the moon. It seems the moon uh, follows the Hatharayan standard of just being real big. Uh, so there are at least a couple of dozen other stations that you see that you can contact. And then obviously you see where you can, uh, where you can hail back planet side if need be. Now, were we told that there's other people here or are we just like the only party that's like, who's sentient on the moon as of this moment? Yeah, as of the moment, the state, uh, the Grand Minister of Agriculture mentioned that she had pulled everyone off of the moon and stopped travel to it uh, mm -hmm. at the Station Master's uh, behest. Because if you'll recall, the Station Master tends to agree with you all that likely what's happening up there is not mechanical, but rather sort of nefarious and involves someone else. Uh, so he was very nervous for his staff and convinced the Grand Minister to pull everyone off the moon until somebody could figure out what was going on. Uh, I guess the first thing Eli is going to do is, because uh, if they have to go from station to station, they don't know, um, but they're going to essentially get their own little like note-taking pad or whatever they have, mm -hmm. and they're going to start writing notes of like, this this comm frequencies to this station, this comm frequencies to the other station. And mm -hmm. as they're doing it, they're just gonna like press, uh, usually there's like an international signal for like SOS. They're just trying to mm. see if there's gonna be anything to respond. They're not like trying to actually contact anyone, not maybe a SOS, just like a testing like communication break. Like it's kind mm -hmm. of like a, it's not like I'm not trying to send audio or like say anything like speech wise i'm just trying to like flicker through the comms buttons to see if anything comes back right 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 uh they all seem to be functioning properly but you don't get anything back uh as you you know begin sort of that process okay uh while Eli is taking care of that while they're sitting there taking their notes and checking comms channels what are the rest of you doing <laughs> still still standing at the door trying to decide who's coming in first no i just went after that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay after great i went i was just like <laughs> fine so I'm like looking around trying to see if I know anything about this, if I recognize any similar things either from being on the Wistful Wish or my own engineering knowledge. It's kind of like, okay, where can where can I start looking for clues? Yeah, so uh, it depends, I guess, on it, either of the other two stations could potentially have information, whether it's the one that monitors the piping on the surface or the one that monitors uh, the asteroids around. Uh, I'm going to go to the one that monitors the asteroids. Okay, great. Uh, so as you sort of get yourself settled at that station, you can see that the level of automation here, considering they still use that dampening gel to get you all up here, the level of sensor automation is actually kind of impressive up here. Um, it looks like from what you can tell each station, this station in particular, and then you can sort of extrapolate from there, uh, has a very specific sort of area of the surrounding space that it constantly scans. Uh, and you can see readouts for uh, incoming asteroids and all kinds of information about them. Their, their basic makeup, their basic size. Uh, there, are, there are readouts that tell you sort of what the uh, what the magnitude of the impact on the surface will be, how much water is likely to come from said asteroid, just, just about any bit of data you can, you can desire uh, about these incoming asteroids and where they are is, uh, is there. All right, I'm gonna start looking for any anomalies or any, or kind of see if there's a way to pull up, you know, either sequences or, or other data mm -hmm. so I can see if there's any kind of anomaly between what this station is picking up or if I have to go from station to station, or Got if there's it. any way to just kind of pull maybe the last 72 or I don't know if we have hours, but we never discussed that. Um, the last like few days okay. of data. So there's anything weird that has popped up. Got it. All right. So Invicta is going to start pouring through uh, the logs for the sensor array. Uh, how about you other two? Sila is going ahead and uploading a map of the moon surface, everything they have in this little area. 
just going to log in and just try to find out as much information as she can. Mm -hmm. So that way she can go ahead and secure the perimeter and make sure nothing is hiding and there's nothing untoward. We're still right. going to go ahead by one room. Okay, got it, got it, got it. And uh, so you're looking for signs of activity other than the four of you? Is that what I'm gathering? Yes. Anything okay. that could possibly cause harm or detriment to the flesh bags. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so Sila is uh, entering vigilance mode. Ikemba, what you up to? It's like still like in the zone, like kind of meditating, but still just like doing basic scans of like, all right, what's here? What do I need to worry about? But being ready for anything because he expects that there's going to be somebody to fight very sure. soon. So sure, he's sure. just like hardening himself to support his team. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So you all get to work and sort of work in, in relative quiet for a while because each of you sort of is, is uh, focused on your own task. And uh, several of you find things of interest. I lie. Uh, as you are clicking through the comms channels for all the different stations, there are a few that, uh, and, and there are maybe two, so I should say a couple, not a few. There are a couple that don't connect uh, it does, you try and, you know, break over and, and it just, you, you can tell it's different. Like, like the, uh, the relay is not quite right, uh, for two, two of the stations. Um, Invicta, took me a minute to get that name out. I tried to mash up Tanya and Invicta three times in my head. Uh, now so I Invicta, need to know what it was. In Vanya. <laughs> oh, <God>. uh, <laughs> oh dear. Um, as you scan through the logs, there is sort of a strange inconsistency. And well, I'll, I'll tell you what it is and then you can sort of let us know uh, what you make of it. But there okay. are logs of, uh, like I said, just about everything. And one of the logs that you find is a log of how often and when these larger asteroids that need to be cut down by the lasers, uh, logs of how often that happens, uh, in and around this station in particular. And you start looking at them and you don't think anything of it at first, but as you move over and start checking the sort of water volume that should have been taken in, you start to sort of, something seems wrong. So you start cross-referencing. There have been more big water heavy asteroids logged as coming to the surface, then there has been water collected. Does that make sense? Did I say that so right? Something is intercepting. So That's you're sort we're of... detecting them, but the, so in ideally there should be no water shortage. We should actually be overflowing with water, but the water's not getting there. Correct, exactly. And apparently it's not because the asteroids aren't coming. Mm, so the... They're they're doing their thing. They're getting to the surface. The water is being the frozen water is being grabbed, but it's not going where it's supposed. It's not getting to where it's supposed to go. Uh, I actually think the question is a step back from that. The asteroids oh. are approaching the moon, and then at that point, you're not sure they might hit and just not get collected, or they might not even be hitting. From the readouts that you oh. have here, it's hard to tell. Uh, there's just a gap somewhere between asteroid approaches and water makes it to the surface, something happens in between those two moments. So basically it's it's almost like when you are, are in a video game, there's a glitch and you see like something coming toward you and then suddenly it just passes you and you're like, yeah. you blinked and it's gone. <laughs> yes. And on the one hand, it's thrilling because it didn't run into you. And on the other hand, it really should have run into you. So this is- strange. Or at least it should have like skidded to a stop past you or, <laughs> or something. Or that, right. <laughs> Um, I, I make notes of that. So I'm kind of like going through this and I'm, I'm making notes in a data pad and trying to get as much, um, data as I can before I look for the station master. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, Captain Sila 919, you are constant vigilance, uh, and looking around and 
well, let me ask this first. Uh, is your vigilance primarily like sight or are you plugged into something? Did I miss that? Are you plugged into something or is it a little bit of both? Oh, I am plugged in. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. I was I'm plugged sure. into the, just into the main. Great. So you uh, actually get some, uh, there are sort of cameras all over these stations so that um, uh, planet side can keep track of what's going on here. And so you can plug into those and that's a great way to sort of keep an eye on what's going on all around. And you happen to glimpse in one of the cameras that's that's pretty close to your station, uh, but out sort of among the, the piping and the surface. You see the piping is all made of this, this rose gold metal that the station master, uh, that the station master called Lal Sona. And it's all that beautiful, bright, vibrant rose gold. And right now, the way that this system's sun is positioned, it's sort of glinting off of the piping near you in a sort of lovely way. But, well, I think it's lovely. I don't know. I don't want to. Uh, but Captain Silo 919, you notice a section of piping that's not damaged, but it's sort of it almost looks blackened or charred or covered in soot or something. And it's very obvious because that section of the metal is not reflecting uh, reflecting the sunlight like the rest of it is. So it looks like this sort of black smudge uh, on one section of piping outside. So if I tried, could I try to like sand it or clean, wipe it off? I want to investigate it. I want to see. Yeah, so why you could certainly that a place. You could absolutely go investigate it more closely, though that would require you to leave the station and go on a little surface walk, because right now you're just seeing it through the camera systems that you've plugged into, which is fine if you want to. Oh, she's laughing. Uh oh. What? I'm not no, gonna say no. it. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, so do you want to uh, go on a little surface walk? Call me Michael Jackson because I'm moonwalking. There it is. <laughs> All right. So uh, Captain Zyla is, oh, I guess you're not, you don't have to deal with the suit. But uh, so you, you also saw the door uh, that was the other door from that central chamber that leads out onto the surface. So I guess Captain Silent 919 is is heading for that door, y'all. Um, Captain? <laughs> yes, Invicta. There, there's asteroids out there. I, I know that you, you know, you don't need to breathe or anything like the rest of us meat bags. But if a whole asteroid hits you, there's a limit to what we can do to fix you. You draw a very logical conclusion. I will see you shortly. All right. Uh, you've got a black box or something. Invicta, for what it's worth, if you wanted to, uh, your the sensor station that you're at uh, is keeping track of incoming asteroids. So you could you could sort of keep an eye uh, in case Sila needs to get out of there in a hurry. Uh, All right, I I will keep an eye on our wayward Monsagene. <laughs> I will okay. uh, before Sila nine one nine leaves. Um, please let me know what your frequency is so that I can hail you if need be um, to warn you about asteroids. Yes, again you can find me at eight six seven five three zero nine with my backup seven 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 ninety three eleven. Ah, I see. Um, uh, this station is um, two eight one three three zero eight zero zero four. That one took me. Nine one one zero zero twenty four. Any of you? Um, so, <laughs> comms are got comms are gotten. Comms. I didn't get gotten. a chance to give my number. <laughs> oh yeah, wait. I, now I want to know Invicta and Akemba's numbers at some uh, point tonight. 
Uh, my hailing frequency is 24601. Yes. 24601. That's all I'm doing so we don't get muted. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. Oh, Comms numbers have been exchanged. We will get a Kemba's whenever he decides to tell us one. His no number is just 007. Oh. oh, well, that's solid. Yeah, there you go. Easy. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Uh, so, Captain Sila is heading out. Uh, Eli is ready to contact Captain Sila should Invicta discover s- something problematic incoming. Uh, Ikemba, do you, what's your plan uh, now that things are sort of moving apace, it seems? Who? Ikemba. Ikemba. Oh, Ikemba's just like laughing at the whole situation. It's just like, Great. you're leaving. You just didn't wait for the team to. <laughs> well. Okay. Just, so he's just kind of like, just like getting ready for all the things. Okay, great. Uh, he are knows you... it's about to go uh-huh. down. He's like, all right. He's thinking about like following her. But uh-huh. that was he, really knows, he knows that like the captain would dislike his just random mm. following. So he's just like in his mind trying to figure out like, should I just follow her or should I? check and then like after all of the thought he's just like captain um would you like any assistance oh akimba thank you for your offering of assistance it is really kind of you to extend your niceties to me i would appreciate the help as i prepared to go on my walk i realized Sometimes it's best to take a step back and, 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 and she updates how to give her copy of how to give and receive love comes back. I hear you and I see you and I understand that you just want me to be safe. Therefore, I will put on the stupid suit. Wait, she was going to go out there with no to, suit? Um, well, to be yeah. fair, she spacewalked on the way to Hothray without a suit. <laughs> to be but there were... Okay. Like, oh, so, no, like, I Kim understand was immediately your concern. confused. Like, yes, yeah, asteroids. Like, yeah. <laughs> Captain, uh, you don't need a suit. It's more... Would you like backup? A suit is one thing, but I understand that your processing allows you to see when things are coming. But in the off chance, is there an assist? Is there a way for one of us to es- escort you so that in the off chance that one of the asteroids is not in a traditional trajectory you could be assisted in the off chance that that happens would you like someone to accompany you i'm happy to do this and it's not in a stupid suit situation it's more uh in ensuring that our crew remains together If someone is here to pull me back in the off chance that an asteroid does get out of line, that would be fantastic. But for now, please hold my sandwiches. And she unzips her jacket and pulls out the sandwiches and passes them out and then zips up her jacket and puts the suit back on. They're like just a little bit gooey. Just a little. (laughs) Akimba's like, well, this is perfect. Then I shall gather my suit as well. I'll hold my sandwich. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you don't need yours. Uh, I'll hold this with me while I'm with you. How does that sound, Captain? Ob- objection, storyteller. Yes. <laughs> Those sandwiches were wrapped in saran wrap, aluminum foil, and 
also in a Ziploc bag stored inside of collapsible Tupperware that doesn't smush the sandwich. Respect my sandwiches. You, you know what? You know what? You absolutely right. I did say she went from zero to Mama Bear, and I don't know why I thought Mama Bear did not mean six layers of protection for them sandwiches. You absolutely right. They are not gooey. They are fresh. They are crisp. They are. Do they have crusts, Silent? How dare you? Do they have crusts? Do they have crust? That is a choking hazard. What is wrong with you? Oh, God. That was great. Oh. That was amazing. I needed that. Thank you so oh. much. Yes, yes. And just so you know, Invictus is cut up using a little shape. And it's oh. a little flower. It's a little flower. Everyone's got a little shape. Okay, okay, that's all great, but <laughs> what flavor is the jelly? It's great. It's Welch's. Yes. All right, it's, all right. It's Space Welch's, okay? Right. It is Swelch's, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Spwelch's? Swel no, I like Swelch's better. All right, I love it. <laughs> all right, so you are then handed, Akemba, terribly sorry, four, pristi three, four a number of pristine peanut butter and grape jelly sandwiches with no crust cut into the shape of a flower. I appreciate your flowered sandwiches, Captain. Well, the aroma of these sandwiches is amazing and I'd, I'd love nothing more than to have a bite. Uh, I was not referring to sandwich uh, reception. I was referring to assistance to ensure that our Captain was not off alone. I would like to, if no one else, I would like to assist in your journey and and have your back as if, as you've had ours, these perfectly flowered sandwiches. It says more about your ability to care for us than anything. So what I'm hearing you say is you don't eat peanut butter and jelly. I do have a ham sandwich prepared as well, if that is more to your liking. It's not about the sandwich, Captain. I'll take that. In fact, please. if you like, I, I will I will eat. And then like, it can be just like staring in the Captain's eyes, like just like with like nothing but appreciation and respect, just opens one of the flower shaped sandwiches and just like eats it and just like, <laughs> I eat a primarily vegetarian diet. Captain, this is the most fitting sandwich for me to be ingesting. Your research is impressive. I'm more referring to you not taking this walk alone. And then he just takes another bite and just like stares at her. just like, you care for us, allow us to care for you. I mean, he's just like putting on a suit. Sila is gonna cock her head slightly to the side. She understands this notion to want to protect her, even though she is fully capable of taking care of herself. And she understands the sentiment. However, the place that she needs Akimba is to be there to have her back and pull her back. So she says this when she updates her latest program, How to Be a Bad Bitch, and says, I got this. And then she flips her ponytail. Up. Yes. And as she like flips her hair over her shoulder, it goes up, she puts on a helmet, and she begins that spacewalk and goes, have my six. Oh, that is the true dream of those and sex nice braids. The camera's just like, all right. I'll have your six. I will keep my distance. But I'm here for you. And he just kind of like, just like finishes zipping it up and then like stays back. Cause she got this. That's right. She got She's this. She's a bad bitch, but like, he's like ready at the drop. Right. To be there for assistance where possible. So he's like, he's, he's suited up and he's like, all right, whenever you need me, I'm here. You got it. All right. Sila opens that airlock, steps out onto the surface of the moon, 
and we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes, folks, to find out what, in fact, Sila 919 finds on the surface of the moon. But in the meantime, we are all human, so make sure that you go get a bio break if you need, stand up, stretch, hydrate, get a libation if that's a thing that you do, uh, grab a PB&J, uh, whatever you need, and we will be back shortly. In the meantime, uh, enjoy some of the absolutely stunning stunning fan art that you all have done over the course of the last week uh, that we're going to have up on the Be Right Back screen. Thank you all so much for all of that. It is truly a joy to get to see that every week. So thank you all for your amazing talents. Uh, we will be back shortly to find out how this moonwalk goes. See you shortly.
Uh uh. So brass, out of my house when I got my whole my whole household outside and some buddies like we was we was frustrated with buddies and you were bringing your whole sound. click here like I want oh, hold on they hear us oh good sound hey, hey everybody y'all are the best oh, hi I'm the camera and I want to punch people in the throat because <laughs> I'm gonna punch somebody in the throat okay <laughs> transition because somebody coming at you in the throat. Here we go. Throat punch. Need some milk. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god! Why did my Why did my I got an error one thousand on my own stream? Because Twitch. Y'all, we is, is silly tonight, and y'all got a little taste of it just now. Welcome. We are back. Hello. Reports are that you can hear us now, which is truly thrilling. Although, uh, you know, really, we, it was just a, a lip reading test for all of you. <laughs> um, y'all failed Hi. every last You're one welcome. of you. Uh, <laughs> now we are back. Hope y'all got uh, got a little extra stretch in there, a the uh, little extra stretch in there, uh, rehydration, relibation, all the things. Uh, we are excited to be back. And now that we are back, we got to see what's going on with this moonwalk. Uh, so right before we left for the break, uh, <laughs> Captain <laughs> Captain Silent 9 there's just no way to get around saying moonwalk at least once in this episode. Uh, Captain Silent 919 headed out onto the surface of the moon. Uh, several of our intrepid adventurers had discovered uh, different sort of anomalies with things going on here on the moon. Sila's, what Sila 919's was that there was a section of the piping, the uh, the rose gold piping that's called uh, Lalsona, was weirdly blackened or sooty or something. Uh, so she has decided to head out and do a little moonwalk to investigate more closely. Uh, of course, the rest of the team was uh, somewhat taken by surprise at her choice to head out, but uh, Eli has comms channels open Open. We, we exchanged comms numbers before the break. Uh, and Invicta, Invicta is keeping an eye on the incoming asteroids so that uh, they can give, uh, the team can give Captain Sila 919 advance warning if something big's coming her way. And Ikemba is ready to either uh, pull the captain back in as she runs back or to go out himself, whatever the situation requires. Because nobody thinks that this is going to go off without a hitch, I can tell. So, Captain Silo 919, you step out of the airlock from uh, the irrigation station that your crew is currently in uh, and out onto the surface of the moon. And of course, the first thing is uh, now that you're out of the station, uh, the artificial gravity sort of doesn't apply to you anymore. Uh, and so you, you know, takes a takes a little bit of a, a, a an extra moment for you to step off of the stairs and onto the surface and you sort of, you know, hit a little more lightly. Has has Silent Nine never experienced a, a different gravity like this before? Only in tests. And tell me you didn't say off without a hitch because if the dice gets hitched in the Cortex Prime system, like that's a thing, so off without a hitch. If I can do the whole thing without any of the dice getting hitched, then we can keep going. That's right. <laughs> There's so many things, like casual phrases, that I can't use in this episode. Can't talk about hitches, that means something. Mm -mm. Can't talk about moonwalking, that means mm -mm. something. What am I going to do? I'm going to keep making references. Keep so going! Silent... Keep going! <laughs> So you uh, step out onto the moon and, and you can see from where you were, you know, the station was slightly sort of above all of this piping. And it really just sort of looked like it just was, you know, a vast sea of Laosona piping. Down here on ground level, you can see that there are, in fact, little pathways uh, and walkways in, in and among all of the different piping so that you can, uh, you know, make your way through excuse me, uh, make your way through fairly easily. And you can head in the direction of that blackened area, that sooty area that you found. Um, as you head out, uh, we jump back in very quickly to the station. And uh, Invicta, from your your sensor area, uh, you can see that there are a few very small little asteroid bits, bits of debris that are incoming for uh, the vicinity of your irrigation station. Nothing sort of in the direction that Sila, uh, that Sila 919 headed, all sort of on the opposite side of the station. So at the moment, uh, things look pretty clear for you all. 
Uh, Silent 919, you arrive at this section and you immediately can tell uh, that it is in fact like some sort of blast residue. Uh, it's not exactly soot or ash because if you go up to it on the piping it doesn't like it's not it you can't just wipe it away it looks like actually the lalsona has been slightly discolored by something so i want to i'm guessing i'm gonna probably have to roll for it to see just like what do i notice that's out of place like, like, is it, do I know what's happening here or is it just not that obvious? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I am going to have you put together a dice pool to sort of take in your surroundings because there are several things for Sila uh, that Sila 919 might possibly, might possibly notice. I am also going to ask Invicta to yes. put together uh it's put together a pool for us uh to indicate sort of your uh, what your awareness of every part of your sensor array uh mm -hmm. just to really keep a close eye on Sila there and and the asteroids coming near her okay um and I'm I... actually I'm going to have you go first Invicta because your role might provide some assistance to Sila depending on how it goes well, then I'm going to use my culture because this is my engineering background. Sure. Love that. Um, no. Okay. Makes sense to me. Let's... And knowledge, because I do have a bit of knowledge in ye old engineering, etc. All right. Um, Got it. And I think I'm going to step up no for this dice pool. All to, right. To a ten is, and that's just for the this roll. It doesn't step it up. Full, you're right? wanting to, you're wanting to use a, a one of your points for it. Yes. Okay. So those character creation points will keep it at the higher level. Like that's part of your your character now going forward. Mm. So it's not just for this roll. Okay. Then I'm just gonna add a, another d6 just to sweeten the pot. Great. Instead of using a character point. Okay. What am I? Oh, um, I remember what I was writing. <laughs> All right. Uh, should I roll or should you roll first? Uh, no, I'm going to roll first this time because it's not a contest. Nothing is actively opposing you. So I'm going to roll to set the difficulty. And I'm just rolling a very simple, because it looks like, looks like we've cleared everybody's stresses, which is great. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to roll a flat 2d8 to set the difficulty. And that comes up to a 12. So 12 um, is the number to beat. All right. Let's see what we can do because I've got four dice in there. And they're all high, so I believe in you. <laughs> We're rolling, roll, rolling, Ooh, roll. Hey, absolutely. Oh, all right. God. So, Invicta, you see, uh, Sila's been out there for I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes now. Uh, been out for a while, and you just happen to see, uh, you know, you're you're keeping an eye on things pretty well, and you notice that uh, a big one is coming uh, and it is it is headed not exactly for where Sila is, but too close for your comfort. Uh, I'm not even gonna dispense with, with like her title. It's Sila. I see the moon and the moon sees me and the moon. Sila. Sila. Hey. <clears throat> Yes, yes. How, how may I help you? There is an asteroid headed towards you, and it's a bit close for my comfort. And also, Akemba, if you're out there, you might want to move too. Because we can't put you back together. At least we can reconstruct Sila. Memories? I don't know. You're kind of going to be jelly if this hits you. That's fair. Thank you for the hands up. You both should move, basically. Uh, I can't pull me back. I can Great. Like reach out and grab her. Yeah, absolutely. So let's do Captain Silent 919's roll to see what she notices in the moment before Akemba yanks her back to the station. Uh, so I'm going to do that one first, but go ahead and tell us about the pool you're constructing. I 
I think you're muted, my dear. This is, I'm rolling to figure out what's going on with this panel. Yeah, to see what you can okay. take in of your surroundings and, and how you can analyze it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go with notice. Great. That makes perfect sense to me. I'm going to use fix. Okay, cool. Tell me more. So I want to use fix so that way if there is a possible way once I figure out what's wrong using notice, then I could possibly fix what's wrong. Oh, okay. I buy that. I buy that. And I'm going to use once again a and use my Android nature to see if I can fine tune and find out what's going on. Great, I buy that. All right, I will set the difficulty. It's another 2d8 roll, and this one is, it's another 12, okay. Uh, <laughs> so 12 is the number to beat on your end. All right, a 15 will do it. So as Ikemba begins to, to pull you back in and help you get away from the this asteroid blast zone, as it were, uh, you, know that the markings on this Lalsone uh, uh, metal here are from it getting sort of um, superheated, basically, uh, which that roll is, is good enough and your effect die is, is a D8, so that's enough that you your guess is that that discoloration comes from a laser malfunction. It looks almost like a laser. Well, somebody took one of the defense lasers to the metal there and heated it up to cause this sort of, uh, to like cause that reaction that caused the color of the metal to change. Do I have any reason to believe that it might have been a hostile force that disabled it to try to get by and do something untoward? Or am I not thinking that far ahead? Uh, no, I think you totally could be thinking that far ahead. And I'll say with that great uh, role to notice your surroundings, uh, you don't see any other signs of like, uh, you know, someone messing with the machinery or or even anyone else really passing this way, right? There's not a ton of wind. I guess there's some so sort of wind every time an asteroid collides. But like, even on the somewhat protected paths that you've been walking on, you don't notice like, it doesn't look like anyone's been out here for a while. Hmm. Is there anything that I can take back to show the crew? Or, I mean, I could always like take a picture of it and a bring picture it back you can up. absolutely do. Yeah, absolutely. If you wanted to take a sample of it, you absolutely could, but that's going to be a race against the clock with this asteroid because uh, it will take you a little bit longer to get the sample loose from the, from the piping without damaging the pipes. I'm going to pull around one of my braids and at the end of it, it flips up and it has like a selfie stick on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that to take a picture. Yes. Through the bottom camera at the tip of the braid. Yes. And then I'm going to try to make my way picture? back. Is it in fact a selfie? Are you in the picture? <laughs> no, I like to believe okay. that as technically sound as Sila is, there's only like her thumb a little bit in the picture. <laughs> Perfect. But yes, not enough right. that it obstructs the view. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just enough that it's a little <laughs> awkward. Uh, perfect. I love it. So uh, yeah, you snap that picture and start hustling back. Uh, Ikemba, you're going, you're you're headed out to try and help her or because she's a little ways away, sort of not within grabbing distance if you haven't left the station yet. I've left the station. I'm just like kind of like rushing to catch up. Great, perfect, I love that. Uh, so the two of you get out there and by the time, uh, so Sila's, Sila 919 is heading back, Ikemba's heading out to try and find her. By the time the two of you meet up, uh, you can both see this monstrous asteroid. I mean, if you didn't know better, you'd say it was the size of the damn moon. It's not that big, but it sure does feel like it when you're out there. And it is coming uh, right down towards y'all. And so it is a rush 
to get back. Uh, are y'all just running? Is there any, like, there are, there's the path, of course, that y'all have taken to get out here. It's a little windy, but the alternative is to try and clamber over the pipes, which is a more direct route, but also requires climbing. I don't know, what are you all doing to get back quickly? I would say run, but we're also, aren't we in zero gravity? You are in less, well, not zero gravity, but significantly less gravity, yeah. Sweet, let's swim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Describe, please. I... You just put those hands out in front of each other and frog it. I'm serious, think about it. If you're trying to go, like if you're pumping your legs too and you're pumping your arms, just think about that speed that you're gonna get. If you're gonna race against time, doing this isn't gonna get you very far when you can go like this and get so much farther by putting your arms out. Like very much like someone who used to moonwalk would do if they were doing something, I don't know, like that was a thriller of some sorts. Like the <laughs> arms would come out in that motion and think about how fast you would move. I was just kind of watching. Uh huh. Her move, just like it's like the meme of like, like is this swimming in space? Like it's just. <laughs> I'm just watching to see if it works. Uh, yeah. I mean, kind of. It. I, I, yeah, kind of. And it's Michael, like, you know just, physics. Like, I just kind of call out, like, that's why I wasn't speaking uh, up. I, well, <laughs> and, and, and that's why <laughs> I hesitated and said, <laughs> I mean, kinda. I'm literally <laughs> studying this for exam tomorrow, but yeah. you have to, you have to have something to push back on you. Air has to push back well, on you. And, and that's no. exactly like, what I was trick question. Say. And like, campus is kind of looking like, Captain, this is a uh, swimming requires water, which <laughs> involves air H two. Oh, uh, there is no water in space, so you're moving very slowly. What I will say is every now and again, as as she swims, she just sort of, by happenstance, her hands happen to like push against some of the piping, which absolutely does propel her more quickly. So like on the whole, like- I'm also imagining it, she's using the air that she had earlier. She has some air reserves and she's just pushing that with her hair back. Oh, I like, love, oh my God, yes. That totally hair. works. That would I totally love all work. Of this. It is a wild combination of like leapfrog, swimming, and like hair jetpack. It's really wild. <laughs> and Kemba just kind of looks and is just confused, but he looks mm -hmm. back to where she's headed mm -hmm. and like he just kind of like crouches. <laughs> and much like. Izuka Midoriya, if you've ever watched My Hero Academia. My Hero Academia, he's just, yes. He's just like kind of like channeling his power. Yes. To his legs. And he sees where she's going. And he just kind of like pushes off in that direction toward the entrance to the ship. And he doesn't say anything about smashes. He just says, I was going to ask. We go. And he just kind of like just like pushes himself off and just says like to the door we go. And just like boosts. Yes, boost. I love it. Okay, I do need, <laughs> I need, do need both of you uh, to create dice pools for this as well uh, to you. see how well these uh, unique um, explorationary, uh, exploratory is the word that is actually a word. Uh, new methods of uh, locomotion on the surface of the moon. Also oh, uh, easy. Also, a uh, jelly pack would work easy. too. She took some jelly earlier and she pushed the jelly backwards. Oh, that would that's also funny. Work. Yeah, just mm. squeeze it behind. I love that. So, equal and opposite. Are we waiting for the captain to go first, or can I do this? Oh, that isn't. Do you? It's up to y'all. Uh, it's six to one since y'all are working independently to to get back. <laughs> yeah, if you want it, have it. And otherwise, I'm down. All right. So let's go ahead and get this success over with. That's um, right. That's so, right. <laughs> positive thinking. It's the power of positive thinking. Genius. All right. So that's lasciviousness. That's stinking thinking. So what I want to do is I'm going to go with do it right or get out of my way. Uh-huh. And I'm going to need to use weaponized braids for the propeller. Mm-hmm. 
Oh. <laughs> Propeller, though. <laughs> I'm going to go with power, a D10. Ooh. Okay, okay. I think that should do it. All so right. Yeah, do it right or get out of my way. <laughs> Certainly seems appropriate. Right? Um, okay. I'm going to go with that. What do you roll or do I, I do? I do. So here is your difficulty. We're going 3D. Oh, yeah. It's just a seven. Just got to beat a seven. And, Love it when oh, a plan comes and, together. Is that an 11? Oh, yeah. So as wild as it is, this leapfrog swim hair dryer blow thing is effective. Uh, and Captain Silent 919 motors to back to the station. Uh, Ikemba, let's check out yours. Ikemba uh, uses his cultural knowledge as a alien. He's been in space regularly. So as part of the process, he's just like sure. comfortable with it. Uh, his survival is oh, crucial sure. to this whole situation. And in fact, I feel like I've got points left. He wants to step that survival up to a Oh, sure. Yeah, you definitely than got D8. points left. Yeah, step it up to that D10. Yes, please. And also, thank you. Um, <laughs> got to find where I so can I the keep the D10. Y'all's points. Here we go. And then... uh. Also, his knowledge of space travel, since he's been in space a decent amount, he understands how this works. He's like, I've done this before in different situations, not as specific as this, but he's ready for it. None. The less. Absolutely. I and buy that. he's like, let's get it. So let's get it. All right. Let roll. me set that difficulty. Oh, you blew it out of the water. I got an 11, but you got a 19. Uh, so yeah, that that uh, Izuku Midoriya smash uh, gets you <laughs> gets you motoring, uh, and you two both uh, even even with the success of this, that asteroid is is terrifyingly close, and it just keeps getting bigger. And as you all are running, you're getting closer and closer, and the asteroid just seems to keep getting bigger, like you can't quite get out from under it. And as the two of you arrive at the door of the irrigation station, sort of leap through the doors into this station, this asteroid is a handful of meters from the surface of the moon. And it, uh, you can see the, uh, the lasers, the laser system in this area that's gonna cut this down because it is obviously far too big to hit the surface by itself. So these lasers have come out, three of them again, and they're orienting on this thing and right as it's about to, right as the asteroid is about to get within range of the lasers, it just stops. It stops dead in the sky and the lasers fire where it should have been. And there is, you can all hear it and, and frankly, probably feel it. You're close enough. As the three lasers sort of orient and, and intersect and hit each other, there is this sort of blast wave of heat and, and well, I guess not sound because there's no air for which sound to carry on, but definitely a heat wave and a shock wave. And you can see uh, as, as that sort of ends, Captain Silent 919, you can turn back and see that now this whole area of the piping is blackened and discolored like the other section was. And this asteroid that has stopped dead in the sky begins to reverse course and travel away from the moon. You muted. Oh, I didn't say anything, but now oh, no, I was, was Tanya was muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Always wants to show. Um, so quick out of character. Are the stations that I'm at are am I able to control these lasers at all? Uh you could go in there, you could go in and reprogram them if you if you wanted. Yeah, they're pretty much set to automation, but there are there do exist manual controls, yeah. Okay, other quick question out of character. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to track this asteroid? 
Uh, you can definitely track it as far as this station's sensors go, depending on what direction it heads. Uh, if it heads just exactly away from the moon, it's eventually going to get out of range. If it heads sort of in some sort of orbit where like it's trying to move around the moon, you could track it as far as the next station and then you could go, you could sort of follow it right to the next station, track it oh, from there and watch where it goes. Does that make sense? Yes. But if it travels too far away from the surface of the moon, it's eventually going to be out of range of the sensors. Okay, well, never mind. Okay, I was done. That was my last auto. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welp. Um, I am just going to at my comm station, wherever that because it's it's it you said it stopped right and it's starting to move in a, a certain direction. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna send a frequency of radio lengths, radio wavelengths towards that direction, um, uh. to see if anything we get hailed anything back. Um, I don't think. I mean, I Eli doesn't know how to calculate, you know, sound waves coming back and forth, but I, all they're doing is just sending sound waves that direction to see if they get a response back. Um, yeah, great question. So you sort of track it and it takes, it takes a few tries. Excuse me, because even <laughs> this whole situation is completely wild. And to make it even stranger, you realize you and Akemba uh, sort of monitoring as best you can realize that not only did the asteroid stop and then start to move away, it does not seem to be moving in a single straight line path anymore. Oh. It goes for a little while and then sort of starts to like swing almost out. And then it pull it's it, it the path that it is taking is decidedly not natural. It's weird. Like, it's weird. Yeah. So you send out your radio waves a couple of times, uh, but then you know the asteroid will change course and you're like, ah, oh, damn it, it's not where, you know, not where it's headed. Eventually you you hit on a trajectory for these radio waves that seems that must apparently uh, sort of match the ultimate direction of the destination of this asteroid. And you make a connection but get no response. But there is something out there that received the hail for sure. I am going to jot that information down and then uh, Invicta. Um, it seems that I have picked up on something um, it's in this direction. Um, got a small, some sort of, res- not even a response, just s- some sort of, the equipment responded, not, not anyone on the other side. Can you make anything of this? And I just show them like, how, what signal I used, how far it was, like, or, or, you know, how long it took to get to that, that place and back. Totally. Um, I, I take this data and I start trying to, to see if I can figure out what should be out where that signal went. Mm-hmm. And see yeah, if it's, and see if it's, sorry, like a, like another moon, is there a spaceship hiding out there? <laughs> uh, it's not another moon, uh, and it's decidedly sort of on the other side of the moon from the planet of Hathoray. So it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not secretly Hathoray. Um, Beyond that, you, I mean, you can call up some like basic star charts to see that there aren't any permanent celestial bodies out in that direction. If you want to get a sensor sweep of it, though, you're going to have to travel to an irrigation station that's closer to that part of the moon. Okay. Uh, Which you all can do in the pod if you want, just take a little while, but totally possible. All right. But I don't know what y'all's priorities are at the moment, so... Uh, priority is getting Ikemba and uh, Sila back inside and not where random reversing asteroids are outside. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, the two of them are in sort of that viewing room uh, and they've just sort of leapt through the, the doorway. The airlock seal uh, has closed behind, but you can sort of see out the windows that some of the glass of the windows is a little blackened as well from the laser <laughs> blast. Uh, it's not, it doesn't look like the structural integrity has been compromised because uh, obviously they have made as much of these, sta- uh, these stations as much out of 
um, out of that same, obviously very durable metal. Uh, but there is definitely markings from that laser blast. Uh, but your two colleagues are inside at least. Okay. Silo, Akemba, report. Yes, Invicta. Status, are you hurt? Are you all right? No, we are not hurt. But we are on our way back in. Uh, Hopefully we should be to the door shortly. Just prepare to let us in. All right, Akemba. Glance, it seemed as if that asteroid did not go in a traditional trajectory. It stopped and then it reversed. Do you have any details of where it went? Yes, but we'll need to go to a different station to get closer to scan. Indeed. I'm prepared. All right. I'm, I will wait for them to actually get insides for all the others. I can show them. I lie scans and what I found. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I lied. Did you have something? I saw you. Mm-hmm. Unmute, so I didn't, okay. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> they come on it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clock y'all where you're muting and unmuting in case I miss, I don't want to step on anybody. Yeah. So you get them in, uh, you all share that information. It looks like the closest station uh, to, to where I lie places the, the, you know, receiver of their signal, whatever it is, uh, is is uh, maybe about a third of the way around the moon. So it should take you, oh, maybe half an hour or so to get there because um, the uh, pod travels at significantly slower speeds here on the surface. <laughs> All right. Um, so back on the pod then. As much as I hate it, yes. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, Invicta, uh, moon surface travel does not require gel. Uh, Yay! <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so y'all can y'all can load up. Uh, is everyone going to this other station? Yeah, I yeah I think so. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm I, going. Well, that was exactly my thought. I mean, I think so, but I don't want to decide for them. <laughs> Akimba's going like all right yeah great right. <laughs> he's confused like his internal understanding of everything is just off Sh- because sure. <laughs> asteroids don't move without tractor beams or something pulling them so it's a, it kind of goes along with his original he's like it's, it's just confirming his original guess of like there's something uh at play here that is not natural and he doesn't like it. He I mean, does not like it at all. So he's just internally just like kind of like turning the the gears of like, how is this working? Who could it be? Because it has to be another entity. It has to be another group of people or entities that are there trying to uh, ruin the Hatharian way of life. And he doesn't like it at all. And in fact, he's becoming slightly enraged at the idea. And oh, that internal rage makes him more enraged because he doesn't get upset mm-hmm. at all. So mm-hmm. he's pissed. Like inside of him, it's just like a ball of like, what the? F-? And he just is not himself. Yeah. He's quiet. Ooh. And he is getting livid at the idea that something would disrupt life of an entire planet by stealing their water source. So he is internally done, but he oh. he says no words to the crew. He's just silent and withdrawn and just short with all of his responses. Okay. Mm. I got it. God, I want to make you do a dice roll now so you can use your you could use your <laughs> personality distinction as a D4 because we haven't had anybody do that yet. <laughs> It's it's been a it's it's been a bad day for Akimba. Like comment their asteroids aren't working the way they should. He didn't know that you can clearly swim in space, so like he's all jacked up. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> I just don't know right. what's real. I, what is roll for righteous indignation? <laughs> I mean roll for swimming in space is nonsense. <laughs> well, it's clearly someone did it. Someone work, did it. Work, didn't it? A robot Look. did it that has no muscles. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Wow. Excuse you. And his in, droid. In his internal mind. And droid. In his mind, he's like, "There's no way that with me, <laughs> with the ability to burn off calories, can swim in space and it make moves." He's been in space. He's tried it. It hasn't worked. So in his mind, it's like, this is impossible. It can't be. So he's just kind of like livid, but also it's just like stacking on his lividity of like, wait a minute, they are trying to steal water from them. So like everything about this is just infuriating him. He's like, nope, 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 nope. Oh my God. So you don't know, hate the player, hate the dice roll. <laughs> wow. So I Victor know, what am I for? notices that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, and she she looks at Akemba. Hey, Akemba. Yes. Did you remember to be luxurious today to yourself? And Akemba just hears that and just like <laughs> he just like briefly meditates to just like kind of like let go of anger. Hmm. Because he knows that in his current state, anything he says will be at his crew. And he appreciates his crew. He's like, nah, I can't be that to them. Sure. Because inside I mean, himself, he knows that he has he has an anger streak that he doesn't talk about to his crew. So he's just like, I have not in Victor. I have been less than luxurious to myself today Can I, I can't tell? explain to you how much I needed that thank you and he's still just like shaking with rage can I ask you something um, DJ and and you can sorry Tanya I want to I want to try something if you're into it DJ and if you're not because I I know not everyone is is always cool with sort of leaving this kind of thing up to the dice so if you're not cool with it we Whatever, totally man, don't have down. to do it do but it. how would you feel about uh putting together a role for to for this control. And I only ask, I would never want to, this is not this type of, Cortex is not the role yeah, at random me. I'm thing. Down. But I, well, I'm justifying it to myself too. So I want to make sure that makes <laughs> sense out loud. Um, and the audience. Here, and the audience, right. This is not really the sort of thing that we would think of as a role in Cortex. But I think what you described just now is so, is so beautifully rooted in Ikemba as a person. And I do think it's a really good opportunity to use your personality distinction at that D4 level. Uh, mm -hmm. which will get you a plot point. So you'll get something out of it regardless of how it goes. Uh, but it just feels like in this moment, Ikemba is very much at risk of taking on some real stress. So is this a D4 roll? Uh, it is. You can put together whatever kind of pool you want. My only requirement is that you will... Uh, so if you look on your... Hold on, I got to pull it up so that I can see what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my uh, screen right now. Cool. I need to look at your screen. Here we go. Uh, so do you see where in your, so life is logical, right? You've got that D8 and then just to the right of it, it says D uh, or D4 equals or plus PP plus plot point. Do you see where that is on your sheet? Mm, no. Where is it? Uh, so up at the top, you've got distinctions, Musalian, life is logical and bio. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you see the eights and then right next to it, there's that other option where it says okay, or the D4. Plus, the four or PP. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and nab life is logical, but nab that D4. If you remember, we haven't done this yet and I haven't talked about it since maybe session zero. But one of the things that you can do with your three core distinctions, which for motherlands is your culture, your profession, and then that personality statement. Mm -hmm. If you ever think that any of those things are actually going to make it harder for you to accomplish something, instead of tossing in the D8 for them, you can toss in the D4. And the reason that that is a, a worse option is because obviously instead of a one in eight chance of hitch hitching, you now have a one in four chance of hitching. So your, your likelihood of rolling a hitch is high and getting stress is higher as a reward for doing something that obviously is not sort of, uh, you know, optimized for your character as a reward for choosing that D4, you automatically get to add a plot point to your total. Ooh. Thanks. Does that, does that whole mechanic of choosing the D4 kind of make sense? Why it's a risk reward kind of situation? Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, I just think, I think that your explanation for what's going on with Akemba was so beautifully rooted in his character that I want to see what actually happens with the dice. Um, so... 
what else do you, so this is basically a test to keep yourself sort of controlled, right? To control this rage mm-hmm. that is building inside of you. So you can put whatever other dice you want. In oh, I know the pool. exact dice that I would add. Great. This. Tell me about it. Uh, influence. Step one. Okay. Uh, he is internally trying to uh, not betray his emotions. And by betray his emotions, for him, mm-hmm. betraying his emotions is revealing his inner emotions. Uh, Campbell is very much like me. I do not like talking about what's going on in my mind or like inside because I don't have the proper wording. So like for him, it's like, all right, gather yourself. Everything that he's doing is just like keep yourself calm, collect, mm. and strong. Uh, and yeah. also balance. Yes, absolutely. For him, his whole goal is to remain stoic and calm and relaxed. So that life is logical, that personal control, that influence over himself, and then the balance of making sure that he stays in the middle because he knows that his rage can be highly problematic, Mm. but not having the emotion of rage can be very detrimental to him. So he's trying to make sure that he holds himself in as middle ground as possible because the more he goes into any direction, the more it affects his mood and his personality. And he doesn't want to show any of that to his crew. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing for me because we've gone meta. Let's get even more meta. You (laughs) know, you know, Ikemba better than I do. So on a scale of, oh, I don't know. Why don't we say one to five? uh, How, how sort of enraged, how hard does Ikemba have to fight against this instance of his internal rage? And I'm asking because it's going to set the type of dice that I use to roll for your difficulty. It's an easy four. Okay, so we're up there. He is close to being thorough. Like, All because right. in his mind, whoever is affecting these asteroids is stealing the lifeblood mm-hmm. from an entire planet. So the fact that it's not a five yet is magical, sure. but he is sure. just, he is doing everything in his power to like hold himself accountable, keep himself yeah. Uh, relaxed so that he doesn't get too wild because he wants to. Everything yeah. about him wants to destroy something because this planet is being affected by whoever's on the other side of that asteroid. So he is done. This, yeah, his whole understanding of life is logical. Everything about it is affected by the fact that somebody steals what this entire planet needs to survive and having seen it and having been in a moment with Bertrand where Bertrand was like, yes, this is what you need to see. And then, <laughs> yeah. and it, like it, he thinks back to that and he sees yeah, yeah, yeah. Bertrand saying like, this is the thing that I was kind of holding it for. And then just remembering that yeah. beautiful landscape of nothing but greenery and mountains and lakes and everything. And He's trying not to, but this Mm. is looping within him. Yeah. All of this, like that, like in in his mind, it's like this greenery, this entire planet, these entire people, and they're stealing what they need to survive. So he is done. So that's an easy four. Okay. Yeah, I buy all of that. I love it. All right. uh, Let's see which narrative wins out for Akemba. I'm going to roll these to set the difficulty. <laughs> I, I get the like feeling these are poo. Ooh, I was uh, worried. I, I, was rolled, like, I rolled two D10s and I got a seven, mm. uh, which is fine, which is fine. Everything was in there exactly as you narrated. So let's see your roll because there could still be hitches even if you do beat the difficulty. Of course, there's not a single hitch in there. So, but Ikemba beats the difficulty by one. Ikemba rolls an eight. So you master this. Uh, We're not gonna add any mechanical stress to Ikemba, but we all know, and by we all, I mean everyone watching me, Ikemba, and maybe the three y'all, it might be a thing that you notice. It It is a real tight battle, yeah. 
uh, Kemba has mastered that rage uh, thanks to Invicta's reminder about being luxurious, but it is it is simmering right there and just ready. Uh, thank you for going with me on that journey. Oh I no, I'm, really I'm cool. down for all of this. That. This is yeah. this is to me. I don't get the chance to go that depth into the character's mindset, so I appreciate that. Yeah, I love it. All right, so y'all are aware that Akemba is sort of mastering himself at the moment, uh, but otherwise, uh, it seems like everyone is ready to head to the other station. Yes. Yes, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a thing. It may be weird, but we never know. <laughs> Uh, Invicta 2 brought snacks. Yes. And, uh, snacks, 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 snacks. knowing that we all had the cheese in our room, basically she has some baby bells in her pocket and she's going to hand a Kemba one like, bro, you need a Snickers, except all I got is some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kemba kind of tastes it and just like, it's holding it in like his two fingers and just. Thank you, Invicta. I can't explain how much I needed this. And he just like quietly unwraps it and just starts to eat the cheese on his way back to his station. Yeah. I loved that. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, So into the pod, you all can strap into your seats. Uh, You can put in the, the, uh, so uh, I lie, you have sort of the, the uh, coordinate markings, you were able to pull those of all the different stations. You can input the destination into the pod. Uh, the gel, if any of you try and hit the, I don't, uh, may, well, I, I might. If any of you try and hit the gel uh, injectors, they're actually disabled because the location is is on the surface of the moon. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a smooth ride. It's not nearly as fast as the one to head up to the moon, but, uh, but you all can head over there. So we arrive at the other station. I just need somebody hand. I just need Invicta handing him a baby bell. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All right. So you all arrive at this other station after maybe 15 minutes. uh, And during the transit to this other station, uh, you all could have seen through the viewfinder in the pod another. It was a ways off. So you all didn't feel any the blast or anything. But you saw another large asteroid uh, come stop get get pulled away and another sort of laser blast uh, uh, in the distance. So this is clearly something that uh, wasn't a, a wild random fluke occurrence, uh, which I think you all sort of anticipated, but now you've seen it happen again. And uh, you arrive at the station and it's basically laid out exactly like the other one. There's a, above the airlock door, there's a designation that distinguishes, you know, this from the other irrigation station, but otherwise it's basically identical. Mm. Um, I'm going to be a little paranoid and try to scan for life forms in there before we go in. Uh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, there are, uh, you know, you can you can uh, hail into the station and sort of do a little scan. It doesn't look like there's, there's anyone in there. It looks as deserted as the last. Okay. Because look, there's things redirecting asteroids. I ain't taking no chances. Absolutely. Absolutely. So y'all can head in. And what is the first order of business now that you've arrived at? As what From what Invicta and Eli can tell, this is probably the closest station to whatever received Eli's hail. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go to the comm station at this place and then I'm going to try and send another signal out into the direction we think something is. Yeah. Uh, and much more quickly, you know, the, the ping comes back again. Hail was received. There is no response though. Okay. Mm. Well, this is the right spot. I, I have no idea what else we should do from here. Uh, can we still see the asteroid or has it been pulled away from the planet by now? So that first one that nearly crushed Ikemba and Sila, except they were too busy swimming and so they got away, that one has been pulled 
far, far away. Uh, but the one that you spotted while you were en route to this station is still visible. It's about to go sort of over the station, though, so you're about to lose sight of it. Um, um, Invicta. Yes. Um, you were in charge of combat in uh, the, the Listful Wish, right? Yes. Um, perhaps maybe you can shoot the asteroid with lasers to see if maybe into small pieces, just to see if we see things ricochet out there. Or, I don't know, just an idea. Um, might might give us more of an idea what's out there. If we, if we see something that doesn't quite match up after everything blows up into smaller rocks, um, maybe, maybe there's something out there we just can't see and maybe that'll let us know maybe there's something out there. All right, well, if I'm going to do that, I need to move quickly because I'm guessing it's like going over. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to steal some Sila, move out the way. Yeah. Move. And, uh, All right. Get out my way. So, you want to take manual control of them lasers and try and sure. uh, hit that asteroid? Okay. Uh, um, it, it is sort of a time sensitive thing. It's also a, a you know, uh, uh, an aim thing, so we are going to. I know we just went away from the dice roller. I, 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 I never... have physical dice I can roll too. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's. Why not? Let's roll some physical dice for once. <laughs> I got my. I got my cortex set here too. That hadn't come out the box yet. Hey. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to stick with culture. Uh, with this one, I'm going to go with fix because I'm trying to do this manually. Uh, yeah, okay. I like that. And uh, definitely knowledge. Can I give it a eight effect die for knowledge? Uh, the well, the effect die is one of the is oh, okay. uh, comes out of your out of your uh, uh, result roll. Okay. Um, I was trying to see if there's a way to add another die to this, but uh, I'm trying to. Th- Thing. Oh, you know what you could do? You could add your uh, D6 weapon specialization because it is a weapon. All right, I will add that. I think it should let you do that. It is. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So I've got 2D10, D8. These two have not come out of the package. So oh. hold, please. All right. Yeah, that's them. Oh, you got yes. nice red ones. I got lovely purple ones. I got like mine Ooh. looked like an oil slick. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Michael, after I love the roll. it. All uh, right, let me roll to set your difficulty. Okay. Uh, that is a thirteen. Ooh, boy. Oh, no, that was satisfying. Well, that was I ain't roll physical dice for this game yet. That was exciting. Ooh, that's that's a whole lot of dice. <laughs> and I did not make it. My uh, total's an 11. Okay. So, uh, where am I going? Here we go. Go back in there. All right. So, Invicta, <laughs> you take aim, uh, and this thing, it's it's... Part of the problem, right, is that as we've seen, the asteroid is not uh, is not taking a a logical linear path. Uh, so you're mm. trying your best to sort of anticipate which way it's heading, what you're gonna do. Uh, you didn't roll any hitches, by the way, did you? No. Okay, good. Um, And eventually it gets to the point where you can tell that this thing is gonna get out of range and you just gotta take the shot and hope for the best. Uh, And unfortunately it doesn't work out. You miss the asteroid, but anyone who's out there watching uh, the asteroid as Invicta takes aim with the lasers and fires, the lasers do not continue on into the cold darkness of space. like like you hope. Uh, but instead, the laser impacts on something. And there is a ripple as if the laser, it looks like when a laser hits a, a spaceship shield and there's a ripple. And for just a moment, whatever was keeping y'all from being able to see this thing 
drops just for a moment. And you all see a relatively small, actually, sort of spherical thing up in the sky. And trailing behind it are these long... I mean, it's metal, it's mechanical, but the best way to describe them is tentacles that are trailing out from uh, from behind this, this sphere, this uh, ship, maybe? This sphere. And you can see, as now, now you can fully, fully see this thing up in the sky, and you can see that the asteroid continues to be pulled towards it. And eventually it gets sort of grabbed by four of the tentacles at the back of this ship. Uh, and they sort of take the asteroid and they move it back uh, and sort of latch onto this thing. And you watch as this sphere begins to sort of rotate or turn and then begins to move off into the distance. I lie. Mm -hmm. At your comm station, you notice something. And you only notice it because up until now, you have been the only thing sending messages, right? No one's been responding. There's been no other comms chatter whatsoever. Those three little dots. I just keep sending like, hey, you up, and it's just dots the whole time. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Um, well... As that ship moves off, your comms array picks up a signal. And it isn't a, a, a verbal, it's not an audio signal, but it is definitely like on a comms frequency. And it's not coming from that thing that just grabbed the asteroid and moved off. It's coming from nearby that thing you can't see what it's coming from, but it's coming from something out there. Mm -hmm. And a few moments later, there's another from somewhere else. There are essentially two signals that, that your comms array happens to catch. Uh, you can't, the, the data on it is completely nonsensical to you, but two other things out there in space sent messages and they're still there as far as you can tell and it's a little earlier than we usually end but that feels like an excellent moment this week to put mm. pause to press the pause button uh and hold out for our next session hey well done y'all i honestly like i knew what the situation was up here and had no idea how y'all were going to handle it. You did great. I thank you. It was a great session. I had a blast. I hope you all did too. Uh, hey, everybody. Thank you all so very much uh, for hanging out and watching and, and sticking with us. Uh, love a good cliffhanger. And uh, and I had a good time with that one. Uh, we are a little sooner coming down. There's a few minutes sooner coming down than usual, which is great because that means as we do our outros, uh, y'all don't have to rush. You can plug all the things that you do. Let people know where to find you as they anxious await next Sunday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, uh, midnight GMT. Uh, so yeah, let's go around and, and do our, our outros. Uh, let's go ahead and go in the same order that we started in, which means we shall begin with, uh, with DJ, if we can. Waiting for that, man. Appreciate you. Uh, I am DJ Knight. I am a Kemba, Salian bio priest, pronouns he, him. Uh, having a blast. This is uh, an amazing group of people, and legitimately, I'm honored to be here. Surprised I've been invited, so I'm kind of appreciative in all ways. So thank you all. I just play video games. i uh, just been excited about the latest consoles and playing a lot of yeah. Spider-Man Miles Morales because you gotta. Like, it's not even a question. Like, if you get the chance to, you gotta. Just turn the music off because Twitch has been wild now with DMCA stuff. Oh, Yeah thus far it'll get fixed eventually but for now like i just turned the music off am i looking forward to hearing the music of the soundtrack yes but for now <laughs> i'm not even gonna bother until i'm done with it and i play it offline 
But uh, no, it's uh, I don't think I've ever got this deep with a character that I've played in a tabletop. So I'm honored to be in this group with these people doing so. Thank you. I, and I you are you. so welcome. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your willingness to go there, sir. It, it was great today, and I, uh, I look forward to finding out more. That's what it's all, all about, right. is getting there. That's you, right. Get there and just like, live there for a little bit. You just gotta do it. All right. Well, after that terrifying moment, let's head over to Michael. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Sinclair II. <laughs> uh, no, I go by Michael Critz everywhere. Um, so Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. Um, yeah, uh, and then I obviously, um, I go by, well, not obviously. My, my, my brain gets ahead of me, you know. Uh, let me slow all this down. Okay, we're there. So my pronouns are he, him. Um, I lie, uh, their pronouns are they, them. Um, and uh yeah had a ton of fun today um i lies a very special character that um i get to play and uh they they're really interesting and it's different from anything i've ever played so it's, yeah. it's always just a good time when i get to play i lie um and there's a lot of like good interactions between everyone today so i'm just good just good times um yeah so what I'm up to, uh, obviously, you hear me stu studying physics all the time and my STEM stuff. So that's what I'm doing almost all the time. I have an exam tomorrow, so that's why you don't really see me streaming. Um, but I might boot up the stream tomorrow for the Shadowlands release uh, for World of Warcraft Shadowlands. So uh, oh, yeah. check me out tomorrow on my Twitch channel. I should probably be streaming. Be nice to uh, hang out with y'all as I try and level up as fast as I can. Um, I also play Magic the Gathering. Um, but that hasn't been happening lately because that takes as much time as doing STEM stuff. So I can only <laughs> have energy for one. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's me in a nutshell. Um, yeah. All right. Go follow. And oh, for heaven's sake, I'm trying so hard not to get back into WoW with this expansion. I can't do it. Yo, I don't have the time. <laughs> me neither. I'm not helping. I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, let's see. Truly. Uh, who was next? I think next up is Tanya. Hello. Welcome to my channel. I am your uh, high and all blade keeper, Invicta. She, her, both her pronouns and mine. Um, I do a whole lot of things all around the internet, as uh, B. Dave Walters is fond of saying. Uh, on my channel, obviously, you can be here uh, Sundays for, oh, God, we only have four episodes left after yeah. today um, that we know of. Things are in the air. Um Normally, Sunday mornings, we do Rivals Wardeep over at twitch.tv backslash Rivals Wardeep. Uh, but illness has struck the Rivals. But we instead of taking uh, Thanksgiving weekend off, we will be back on the 29th. I'm your DM. And they're in prison. So let's see what happens. Um, don't know when Dungeon Crossing or uh, Dragon Age will be back. But tomorrow, if you like Dimension 20 and like Adventuring Academy, the episode I was on drops tomorrow. I don't know the exact time. But I'm sure I will tweet about it. So follow me everywhere, Cypher of Tear. And then um, over the weekend, I'll be doing some Valhalla, some Miles Morales, maybe some Demon Souls. I don't know because people like to backseat mm. and I'm still stuck in the starting area. So we'll <laughs> see. Um, but yeah, follow me. I hang out and do a lot of things all over the internet. Same name everywhere. Say hi. And uh I'm going to give DJ a hard time because you shouldn't be surprised that I invited you, sir. I had a great time playing Dishonored with you, and I'm glad yes. you're here. I still got to show appreciation to it, though, so thank you for inviting me. Like, I've played, like, three major campaigns of, like, any tabletop stuff. And this is one of them since I've been streaming. So I still have to show appreciation for it because not everybody can do it. So you're faith in me. This is much appreciated. Thank you. And You're well welcome. placed. Uh, I had a black, I think was the most impactful Invicta moment when she pulled out more snacks. Maybe. Uh, I feel Let's like we learned more captain. about her. That's what, <laughs> uh, That was also excellent. Uh, all right. Uh, oh, uh, real quick before Christina does hers, we are going to raid. So if y'all want to spread the motherland's love, uh, stick around until we get done with these outros so that you can come with us. All right, Christina, tell us who you are, where we can find you and all the things that you do so fabulously. Hi, my name is Christina Ariel. And yes, the answer was yes. I am wearing pajama bottoms underneath the cosplay at the top. 
and they are pink sweatpants. You're welcome. Um, yes. You can find me tomorrow on twitch.tv backslash CNE games, where myself and Mark Mir, who many of you know as Commander Shepard from Mass Effect, do a voiceover campaign where we... Someone plays Idol Champions, and we are the sports commentators, giving you a play-by-play of what's happening, and also reading voiceovers, doing voiceovers for every character in the game between the two of us. It's really fun. Comes on at 1 tomorrow, p.m. Pacific time. And then also, Michael Kritz and I will be on as well tomorrow on Twitch.tv backslash lfm underscore network where we play in our dark sun campaign rise of the veil of the alliance journey to the obsidian spire that should be really fun if you like michael here you'll like michael there if you like me here you might have some questions and also you can find me here on sundays hanging out with my homies while we play a game called Into the Motherlands Prime by Cortex. Have a great week, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. You know, give some props to the indigenous people because this whole holiday is based on a lie. <laughs> Happy holidays! <laughs> Amen to all of that! Alright, and I am Eugenio. You might know me as DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, you can find me on the Twitters at, at DM Jazzy Hands, also here on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash DM Jazzy Hands. I try to stream on my channel three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we play video game RPGs lately. It is mostly uh, Dragon Age Inquisition and Baldur's Gate 3, the early access. Uh, we have a good time with that. Other than on my channel, you can find me tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific over on Roll20's Twitch channel, uh, playing in, in space again, except I'm a player this time in a campaign of Burn Bright, a science fantasy tabletop game uh, GM'd by the fabulous Celeste Conowich from the Venture Maidens podcast. Uh, let's see, this is our week off from Harper's Tale, so no game on Tuesday night, uh, which means other than that, you just find me back here next Sunday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific for more into the motherlands hey thank you all so much for hanging out tonight uh really appreciate it as always we want to say a quick thank you once again to die hard dice uh for creating these beautiful musalian dies uh, musalian skies dice for us you can check them out and everything else that they offer at dieharddice.com thank you so much to blue microphones for providing the cast with microphone upgrades you can check out all of their merch uh or sorry all of their products at bluemike.com thank you so so very much to all the folks over at cortex by fandom for allowing us to use the cortex system for this amazing game and thank you to twitch uh for all of your support and help getting this session off the ground we super appreciate all of you as well we love the fan art i can't tell you how much it brings us joy to see that every week and to know that you all are here in chat with us having a good time because we certainly are as well uh we are gonna run over and raid balian versus predator uh and it's gonna be a good time over there once you get over there uh give them some motherland's love if you would in the meantime we will see you next week if not somewhere else before uh before then please stay safe please stay healthy please wear a mask uh and happy gaming y'all yeah and when you get over to uh balian's channel click their user icon twice so it gets rid of the raid and refer notes so that helps their views uh so they can uh advance they can level up on twitch yeah because we need more cool folks with that partner badge that are that's right yeah. and she's fantastic Yes. So thanks for hanging out. Please be safe. Please don't go anywhere on Thursday. If, even if you normally celebrate Thanksgiving, be safe. Stay. I'm just going to say, stay the fuck home. Yeah. <laughs> wear yeah. a mask. It's your channel. Yeah. You say what you want. <laughs> just stay home. We're still front page. I'm going out there. Seriously, wear a mask. You might think that, nah, I don't have to wear a mask. Wear a mask. Yeah, you wear do. a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear it. It's Journey. easy and it saves lives. Yes, literally. Please. I I don't ask for much from y'all, but wear a fucking mask. Yeah. And with that, we're gonna go raid. Bye. Go raid bye. Go have fun. <laughs>